Bon a la cal, my garden of roses. Let's spend some time talking about the Twitter lockout. Now, I want to start by addressing the fact that Twitter is attacking what is called automated behavior in their lockout screen. When you go to the when you go to your account and you've been locked out, it'll say your account is locked, and then it'll say we've determined that your account has shown automated behavior. I find this remarkably disingenuous of Twitter for one very specific reason, the reason being right here on the screen, and that is the Twitter API. Twitter wants people to create bots and use their API to publish tweets, to retweet and like things, to analyze tweets, to optimize ads, and as they say, create unique customer experiences. They have an entire system built so that people can connect scripts, bots as you might call them, to their system for the purpose of doing exactly what they are now punishing. But they're not punishing everyone who does this, no. It seems that there is a lot of bias against conservative tweets due to the interest that Twitter and many other groups have in condemning conservative and libertarian users. This is a problem. This is actually a big problem. And while the left is laughing their asses off saying, oh, you lost thousands of Russian bots, they don't actually have any clue what they're actually talking about. Because the API is specifically designed for the purpose of automating your use of Twitter. Without the Twitter API, you wouldn't have systems like uh, Crowdfire or Hashtags.org or any of, of the other uh, uh, Hootsuite, uh, any of the other number of systems that people use to interact and prof use Twitter on a professional level. And yet, the same automation that allows all of these large companies that have profited off Twitter's API to provide these services is the same behavior that is being punished when used by small and medium-sized accounts. If Twitter keeps doing this, they're going to create a lot of trouble for themselves financially, primarily. Because one thing I noticed when going through tweets on the subject is that there are a lot of people who were users of Twitter ads for the purpose that were locked out of both Twitter and Twitter ads because they were determined to be, you know, botting, because they were determined to have automated behavior on their accounts. Now, I would love someone to answer this for me. Why would you invest in Twitter ads if you were an automated account or a user of automated accounts? If you can spend $20 to get 500 upvote, you know, likes, 500 retweet or, you know, 100 retweets for $20, why would you invest the much higher price of $40 for approximately 100 views, maybe 25 likes and 10 retweets? If that, at the same time, uh, I'll tell you what the answer is, you wouldn't. If you are legitimately using Twitter ads, you are absolutely not trying to use Twitter bots, except in the case of one company. And this is the story that I think really shows off the severe bias in Twitter's algorithms and decision making. The Columbian Post posted an article uh, in which, which is titled, Twitter locks out thousands of libertarians and conservatives out of their accounts, in which they say, our entire staff here at the Post just had to verify our Twitter accounts via SMS, so you're not alone, readers. Even the libertarians in our staff got hit. As of this update, reports indicate Twitter accidentally labeled tens, possibly hundreds of thousands of libertarian and conservative accounts as bots. During the process, they suspended WrongThink, a right-wing friendly, free speech focused social media network, much like Gab. Which begs the question, will Gab be next? It's clear what Twitter's staff are doing. Back in November, they stopped accepting new requests for Twitter verification, preventing anyone they disagree with from receiving added exposure and credibility associated with the coveted blue check. 
Now, they're hoping to purge the platform of the rest of us through this war of attrition. Frequent shadow bans, lockouts, etc. to harass libertarians, conservatives, the alt-light and alt-right until we give up and leave en masse. And here's a screenshot of what the account lock actually looks like. Your account seems, appears to have exhibited automated behavior that violates the Twitter rules. To unlock your account, please complete the steps below to confirm you are the valid account owner. Verify your phone number. For those claiming this was to purge Twitter's jacked up platform of real bots, I have an interesting piece of information that counters that claim. We recently purchased a large counter quantity of fake followers from a Russian bot provider for a backup Twitter account as part of our, our investigative report on Twitter bots and their influence. None of these actual fake accounts were locked or restricted last night. This is where I find this to be one of the most interesting stories to come out of the Twitter lockouts. The fact of the matter is, people who were actively buying fake accounts for the purpose of investigating their actual impact on the platform were able to go to services like Crowdfire and analyze their followers. Because Crowdfire will show you if an account is in restricted mode or locked out. And while Tons of real people were locked out of their accounts. Entire companies, such as the Columbian Post, for example, when they went to investigate, they found that all the bots that they had bought in their investigative research for a separate account weren't locked out. They weren't restricted. This brings up many questions, and it really does make you wonder just what Twitter is using to analyze and determine what is an automated behavior or not. In addition to this, we have a lot more problems to consider with this because Twitter is destroying essentially an entire, I mean, let's say 2 million of the nearly, what is it, 300 million accounts on Twitter right now. Every day they're going to shave off another percent of themselves and eventually everyone is going to have lost viewers. Everyone is going to have lost followers and people that they were following. There are a number of accounts talking in the uh, Twitter lockout hashtag that have identified that it wasn't their followers that disappeared, but rather the people they were following, news accounts they were following, people that talk it at length in threads who produce original and relevant content in threads completely vanished off the platform. And it's one thing to lose followers. You can chalk that up to, oh, I must have had bots following me because I had decently large numbers and it made them look more real. That is, you know, a completely fair thought to have about the situation. But when the people you choose to follow, a real person chooses to follow, find that these people that they're following have just vanished in the night, that's a much different story because we're dealing with human validation of people that they, they agree with. People whose accounts are followed because, you know, it's not that these people have a lot of followers. It's that these people went out of their way to follow this individual because they liked the content, the threads that they produced. There are people, uh, you know, there are a number of people I follow because they have very in-depth studies that they write in their threads. And it, it stuns me to see just how, how many of them have vanished in the night. Because these, I mean, these are people who Twitter has hated for some time as well and are constantly trying to get off the platform, not because they're saying anything or doing anything wrong, but rather because they make conservative and libertarian points in their threads and these threads in turn get retweeted by bots. And let's not make the assumption here that bots are at all capable of making a decision, you know, on based on any sort of political views. Bots are programmed to do specific jobs. 
They search for keywords and they retweet those keywords. They search for specific analytical details and they repeat that behavior. The bots don't have a mind of their own. They're not super intelligent Google deep, deep learning machines. That's a waste of effort. No, these bots essentially are simpletons that see that if you put the word MAGA in your tweet, they're going to retweet it to make themselves, you know, so that the owner knows that they look more real. And if these accounts aren't getting removed, but real people's accounts are, then Twitter has a lot to answer for. Not to say that Twitter doesn't have the right as a private company to do, you know, to do whatever they want with anyone on their platform. Unfortunately, no uh, precedence has been set for freedom of speech in public venues that are private servers. While Marsh v. Alabama gives us the precedence that you are allowed to speak freely on streets that are privately owned, given that is your only way of communicating, your, your only way of, uh, well, in the case of uh, Marsh v. Alabama, uh, you know, spreading tracts and uh, 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 preaching, public preaching, uh, the precedence has not been applied to the modern age. It has not been applied to servers. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with regards to Marsh v. Alabama, uh, a woman who was in a privately owned town, the entire town was privately, even the streets and everything was privately owned, was speaking outside of a uh, post office, uh, basically doing street preaching and she was arrested for trespassing. And in the case, it was determined that if the only place you have uh, to exhibit your free speech was technically private land, a company that owns that much is legally uh, required to sacrifice some of its privacy to ensure the freedom of speech of others. And this needs to be brought before a Supreme Court for the purpose of applying that precedence to servers if we actually want free speech and open dialogue on social media networks. Otherwise, these companies are still completely free to do whatever they want to us. They can take out anyone they disagree with and they can do it under any sort of justification they want, including saying that real people's accounts have shown automated behavior. The exact same automated behavior that New York Times uses, that CNN uses, that all of these acceptable and social justice supporting news outlets will use can be used to get rid of anyone who happens to have a conservative or libertarian view. I don't suspect Twitter's going to respond to this. They're just going to keep purging quote unquote bots and we're going to see more and more conservative voices vanishing from our followers and our following lists. And as this happens, Twitter's just going to remain silent, say they're getting rid of bots, but the bots are going to stay because the bots aren't the problem. The bots are part of the system. The bots are a feature of Twitter, not a bug. So if that's, what, if that's what Twitter wants, it might be time for everyone to start moving to Gab, start moving to WrongThink, start moving to Minds and other social platforms. Because these media giants have an oligopoly and what they want is what they're going to get until the consumer says, we're not going to go with this anymore. We're not going to let you control us. Thank you very much, and I will catch you next time. Bonsoir.